Welcome to Gossman Knives YouTube channel. Now today I'm going to talk about firewood prep and uh, mainly using uh, using a knife, uh, the Big Board Tusker. Um, but first I want to show the cutting tools that I usually carry whenever I go out camping or uh, spending time in the woods. Um, one of the most important cutting tools to have is a, some type of saw. Uh, usually I carry this folding saw. It's lightweight, easy to pack, but you can carry any size saw that you want. If you want to carry a bow saw, that, that'd be fine. Um, there's a lot of good saws on the market. Wyoming saw is another one that I like. Uh, this is a Baco uh, folding saw. It's probably the best one I've ever owned. I highly recommend it. Um, it's great for when you're uh, preparing your firewood and you find some rounds of wood that you want to saw down to, to a fairly decent size and you want to either split it with that with your hatchet if that's what you like to use or um, baton it with a knife which uh, tonning is controversial I enjoy doing it it's not really necessary um, but it's a lot of fun and it's a, it's it's a way to use your your knife um, so that's a very important tool to have um, when you're heading out. Uh, the other tool, which is something that I normally carry in colder weather uh, when the necessity for fire is, is a must for warmth. Uh, mild weather, you, you can take it or leave it. It's not really all that necessary. It does make it easy to break down larger pieces of wood. Um, you know, if you got some big pieces you want to split up where the knife is just not going to be able to do it. Um, this one here is a Wetterlings um, 25 inch handle on it. I have a larger felling axe Wetterlings that I really like a lot, but this one's a nice size to pack. It fits right in my pack and uh, it's easy to carry, it's not a lot of weight. Um, and that way you got something larger uh, to split wood up. And you know, a lot of people, when they comp do comparisons on large knives and, and axes, really axes in a class by itself. Uh, usually the controversy is between a hatchet and a large knife. Um, and the other, th the other rule when it comes to axes is the shorter the handle, the uh, or, I'm sorry, the longer the handle, the safer the tool. The shorter the handle gets, the more probability there is to hit yourself with it because you don't have as long a reach with a shorter handle. And that's where um, hatchets can be extremely dangerous in the hands of an inexperienced individual. Um, I like to use a knife. I think it's safer than a hatchet. Um, Although I do like hatches too, I like all cutting tools, but if it came down to breaking down wood with a smaller cutting tool, I'd rather use a large knife than a hatchet. To me, it's just a safer way to do it. Um, so that's, that's the, other, the other tool that, uh, that I like to carry. Now, when you're getting ready to prepare a fire, what you wanna do is, just like anything in survival, is preparation. Make sure you've got everything, all your fuel, ready to go so that you don't start your fire, whether you like to use a match, a lighter, a fur rod, flint and steel, whatever your method of starting a fire is. My preferred method is a fur rod and Vaseline cotton balls. It's simply no nonsense. It's, it's a cheap way to start a fire and it's literally weatherproof um, you can start a uh, cotton ball up in any kind of weather it could be pouring down rain and it's going to light where matches can fail um, lighters especially big lighters in cold weather they, they they're hard to light um, if you keep it in your pocket and you keep the lighter warm it's it's going to light better than if it's laying out or in your pack or whatever you go to use it it's not going to light as well so I like to use the fur rod and the cotton balls. And what you want to do is make sure you've got all your 
like I said, all your fuel ready. So you'll get your small, um, like wood curls or shavings or whatever you want to use uh, as your your um, initial starting tender. Then you, what you want to do is you want to get some stuff like this, like dead branches. And break these smaller pieces down and then work your way down to where you've got larger pieces. So basically what you want to do is start small and build bigger and bigger and bigger so that you've got all your fuel ready to go and you're not lighting your fire and then running all around the woods trying to gather up woods before your fire goes out. So if you got everything laid out, prepared, ready to go, you're going to have a more successful fire making process than if you're running around trying to get everything. Um, as far as uh, getting into the larger pieces, um, I didn't get anything real big because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time batoning through wood. So if you get pieces, say this is a round, something like this is a good size to break down with a knife. You don't want to get some big stump or big long piece and try to break it down with a knife. That's just ridiculous. That's where your axe comes into play. So something like this is going to be a lot easier. Whoop, I just fell down there. It'll be a lot easier to break down with a knife than if you try to get something really large. Um, and as far as a baton goes, um, <laughs> it's funny because a lot of people say, oh, you know, they want the spine rounded off so you don't damage your baton. Well, the woods is full of sticks. I mean, it doesn't really matter. This is nice to have nice and sharp spine if you want to light your fur rod off your the spine of your knife. Um, get yourself a, if you can, I don't recommend cutting live things in the woods if you, if you can avoid it, but uh, you're better off getting something green as a baton because it's less likely to break. Um, some type of hard, dense wood will work. If you break it, you just get another piece. It's no big deal. But you want something that's going to be heavy enough to drive the knife down through the wood. And depending on the density of the wood is going to really depend on um, how much effort it's going to take. Because you don't want to spend a whole lot of effort doing this. That's why I don't recommend doing anything uh, very large because you're just wasting your energy and time. Especially if you're really in the need to get a fire going. But this is a good way also if you're in a wet climate. If it's raining or snowing or you're in an area that's just had a heavy rain or whatever, you can get into the dry wood inside of this that wasn't exposed to the weather. That's another good thing about Patani, you're able to get the dry wood. If you notice too, when I started doing this, it's, the blade is running with the grain of the wood and it's like basically just peeling it off right now, but now I'm getting down into a little bit more meat. Okay, there we go. And you can break this down as small as you want. It's good to get it down it's fairly small, like some stick size, small sticks. This is poplar, it's fairly easy to split. Not a whole lot of effort, that's why I say I didn't wanna get into any real heavy stuff and spend a whole video baton it through wood. But if you get it down like that, that can be like your step up from mid-size rounds that are off of a branch or something like that. 
and split these down. And you can take them down as small as you want. And the other thing I like about doing this is you can split these down. Yeah, this is just veering off. Um, split it down like this. And you got some pieces here now that's going to be a little bit larger from when, as you're building your fire. Um, you get into stuff like this, and this is where you can get your starting tender for your fire. And then get yourself a, I'm not going to do a huge pile, but you get yourself a nice pile of shavings like this. If you want to start the fire with just this, you can. But you're going to want to get a little bit finer than what I went. Um, but for using a cotton ball, which I'll demonstrate when I'm talking about how easy it is to start. And carry it in a container, waterproof container, which really, even if it gets wet, it's not that big a deal. But you got your tinder here that you're gonna start your fire with. Then next to it, you got all your stuff lined up according to size, small, a little bit larger, medium, bigger, bigger, bigger. So that as your fire is building, you can add to it and eventually build yourself a nice big fire. And for warmth or for cooking or whatever, once you get a nice bed of coals, then you can, uh, then you can, you know, fix some food if you want. But take a piece about like that and then put it like in uh, underneath there like that and basically all you have to do is uh, there you go one strike you got it going that's the nice thing about the cotton balls and they burn I timed them one time a fairly good size cotton ball burned for about eight minutes believe it or not five to eight minutes but it gets going pretty good and as this is building you just add to it break up the little branches and add to it and um, it works out very well this will probably burn out I'm not gonna be I'm not doing this video to build a fire I just wanted to show you how I do it and uh, using a uh, large knife for batoning works out very well so that's pretty much all I wanted to go over. Um, there's probably a million videos out there on people building fires, but I haven't ever done one. I thought it'd be fun to, fun to show how I do it and uh, the different cutting tools that I like to use. Um, I do like to carry, a, a lot of times I'll carry a, about a four and a half to five inch blade. Um, I don't always carry a large knife. Uh, it depends on the weather. Sometimes um, I will carry more than one. 
but uh, a soul is extremely important, and uh, that's a, that's something that I always have with me. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're looking for the Tusker model, um, I no longer take custom orders. I make knives uh, ready to be for immediate delivery. Um, you can go on my website at www.gossmanknives.com. Click on to the online store and you can see what I have available. Um, usually when I make the big board Tuskers, they go pretty quick. Uh, so all I can say is check back every once in a while to see what I have. Um, usually I have anywhere from 12 to 20 knives available in there at any given time depending on how, how well they sell. So uh, I appreciate you watching and uh, until I think of something else to make a video about, um, I'll see you the next time around.